Okay, so for these problems, um, these should be a review because we did fractions in the beginning of the school year. However, it, the fractions are, um, and this is an opinion, but they can be a difficult skill, but they're also a very important skill, and you'll see them a lot in um, in older grades, so definitely I know in fifth grade. So um, it's important that we spiral back and move back to these and make sure that we um, we're comfortable with them. Okay, so when I see fractions like these ones, oh, and by the way, I know it's problem of the day and I snuck quite a few in, but um, hopefully because it's a review, it's not too terrible. Um, so for these, when you see, when, when my eye looks at these fractions, the first thing I think is, I think mm, they look a little funny. Okay, and there's this song um, by the rapping mathematician. And it says, when it's bigger on the topper, it must be improper. Okay, when it's bigger on the topper. And really what that means is we know we have a numerator on the top and a denominator on the bottom. And when the numerator is bigger, it's called an improper fraction. And an improper is just that it's, it's another way to say it is it's not proper. It is not written correctly. Okay, a lot of times I know um, students will say, hey, that's my answer. And it's like, well, it's kind of your answer. It is your answer, but it's not written in proper form. Okay, so we need to make sure that we know how to take these and turn them into mixed numbers because mixed numbers is the correct or proper way to write them. Uh, the rapping mathematician also says, um, an improper fraction, yo, what's that? The denominator's skinny and the numerator's fat. So just a fun way to remember what improper fractions are. Okay, and so for these, there's actually two ways to solve. And sometimes I like that about math because it's like, oh, cool, there's more than one way. But sometimes that can also be annoying. It's like, oh, okay. So I'm going to show you the two ways. Um, okay, I'll show you right here. So one way is... 15 fourths is the same thing as 15, this fraction bar, I mean, this division bar actually says, this fraction bar is a division bar. It says divided by four. So one way to solve is to, let me zoom in a little bit, make sure you guys can see with me. One way to solve is really to just do 15 divided by four. So 15 divided by four. Four goes in, doesn't go into one. It goes into 15, and if you need to write your multiples, you can. 4, 8, 12, 16 is too high, so it went in 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. Subtract, you get 3. 4 doesn't go into 3 anymore, and there's nothing else to bring down. So look at my answer. This is a little tricky. It's 3 whole, 3 left over, so the remainder is 3, and it's still cut into 4. So... I'm going to just circle that. It's still, remember I used to, I always draw a knife here. It, that's a terrible knife. But it's still cut into fourths. So it's three whole, remainder of three, and it's cut into fourths still. Okay, that's the first way. Another way that we did practice, and I'm gonna kind of squeeze it up here, is decomposing fractions. And for that, take the improper fraction 15 fourths, and you think about, well, wait a minute, there's stuff in there. For instance, it's it's made out of other fractions, like four-fourths is a whole. But it's got more than just four-fourths, right? Oh, it must have another whole. Another four-fourths is another whole. Oh, it's got more because this is four-eight. I have 15, so let's keep going. Four-eight, let's do another four-fourths. Four-eight, 12. And so far I have three holes. So I've got 4, 8, 12, 16. Oh, I can't do another hole. I can't do another hole. So far, I've got 4, 8, 12 fourths. So 12 fourths, 13 fourths, 14 fourths, 15 fourths. So I have three extra fourths to use. So how much did I use? I used one hole, two hole, three hole, and three fourths. Okay, so that's called decomposing. You're kind of taking the improper fraction and breaking it down. And you would get three whole and three fourths just the same way. So this is method one. 
is using standard algorithm and method two is to take the improper fraction and decompose it or break it down, okay? Um, I don't care which method you like. The only thing is for time's sake, I'm not going to show you every method on this video or like do these all using both methods. So what I'm going to do is just go quick through it using, I'll switch methods. So I'm gonna use this standard algorithm for this one, 13 divided by five, because 13 divided by five, remember the fraction bar is actually division bar. Five doesn't go into one, it goes into 13 twice, that's 10, subtract to get three. So I've got two whole, three remainder out of, it's still cut into fifths. Okay, for 21 fourths, I'll try the second, the other method, just for those of you who like that. And I don't care which method you use again, as long as you are feeling comfortable with one, and maybe even comfortable with both, and you can switch the way I am. So I'm gonna try this method, this time decomposing. So I've got 21 fourths, and I start to think about, well, that's four fourths. That's another four fourths. That's another four fourths. That's another four fourths. So, so far I've got four, eight, 12, 16. Yep, I could do another four fourths. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20 fourths. So, so far I've got 20 fourths and I've got one hole, two hole, three hole, four hole, and five hole. I've got 20 fourths. I can only do one more 20 fourths plus one fourth. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, and one extra fourth, okay? And the last one, I'm gonna use the standard algorithm method. I find the standard algorithm method just to be a little quicker, saying 27 divided by six. Let me make sure you can see that. Okay, 27 divided by six. Does six go into two? No, does six go into 27? Yes, if you need to write your multiples out, go ahead. 6, 12, and 18, 24, 30. Well, 30 is too big, so it went in four times, and that was 24. Subtract, you get three. So it's four whole, three remainder out of six. And if any of you said, wait, four and three six is the same as four and a half, that's fine. If you didn't, that's fine too. Um, because it didn't say you had to, but um, thinking about that. Okay, so math, 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 math. Sometimes we have improper fractions and we have to change them to mixed numbers. On these ones, and there is a reason, and I'm not even going to get into it right now, but sometimes you really need to change mixed numbers. I don't like how it just says to fractions, to because they are a type of fraction, but to improper fractions. And Sometimes you do need to do that. So I want you to you know, know it's not just because this problem's asking. There's some other skills that we're going to learn that helps if you just have a numerator and a denominator which, and no whole number, okay? And so that's the good thing about improper fractions. So how do you do that? Well, I always called it the swirly. <laughs> so here's my swirly. So let's pretend we've got a whole number, a numerator, and a denominator. Okay, so you do a swirly. See how it looks like a swirl? You multiply and then add. So swirly, three, multiply, then add. So three times four is 12, plus one is 13. And it's still, there's my knife, as always, it's still cut into fourths. Now, really fast, I know this video is getting long and I don't want to lose you, but I just want to show you something. That's because you have three whole. I just want to show you why you're doing the swirly works, you know? So you don't just think, oh, it's a swirly, but that really doesn't mean anything with math. Look, you have one, two, three whole, and one fourth. The reason the swirly works, what you're really doing is saying three whole fourths. So three whole cut into fourths is four, eight, 12 fourths. Look when you multiply, three times four was 12. You're really saying, okay, I have 12 fourths and then you're adding in. So that was the multiplication, three 
fourths, four, eight, 12. And then the adding part is this last part. Oh, I've got one extra added in. So that's why the swirly works. So first you're multiplying the eighths, six whole, but they're cut into eighths. So six times eight, 48, okay? Add seven, and it's okay if you need to use fingers or dots. So 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55 over eight. It's always cut, there's my knife, terrible knife, but cut into the same eighths. Swirly, five times and then plus. So five, but it's cut in a fifth. So five times five is 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So 29 fifths. And the last one, two, so let me do the swirly, multiply then add. So two times six is 12, plus one is 13, and it's always cut into six. And again, one more time, just so you know how it works, it's cut into six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is cut into six parts. I had two whole and one six. And the reason it works is you're saying two whole cut into six. Two whole cut into six. This is a whole and this is a whole, but they're cut into six. So this is six, six, plus six, six is 12, six, and plus one more is 13, six. So I hope that this isn't just checking your answers, but maybe even for some of you, like, wow, this kind of made me either go back and remember stuff we learned, or maybe I even learned a different strategy or a different way, or maybe finally something's clicking, okay? So we'll do more work with fractions tomorrow for problem of the day.